we're working together on a project. Is my voice? Is it working? This <laughs> <laughs> called Diversify. This is a European project, um, all about developing plant teams and understanding the combinations of plant mixtures which work well in the field. A major part of this project is doing uh, trials, both research trials, which Adrian has explained, but also farm on-farm trials and field-scale trials. And this is a happening across the whole network. You can see that it's covering a wide range of different climatic conditions. And we hope that from this research we'll be able to understand the plant teams which work well in different scenarios and also under different climates in the future. So for the field scale trials, we have a number of the research partners which are operating at a larger scale. So they're working with farm machinery to drill their plots and uh, we'll sample at a different scale. And this will make us understand whether the patterns that we see in the research do translate into real fields at a farm scale. As this is often a question that you get asked whether it would actually work in my field. And we want to begin to unpick this a bit more. You can see that the different types of plant teams, different combinations of crops have been trialled across different countries, um, mainly cereal legume crop combinations. And um, we're testing on different size fields, but these are still um, research uh, stations. So to give a bit of a background into how this works, at the James Hutton Institute, where Adrian works, they've been conducting the plot trials, which give us the inter information about the specific mechanisms which underlie the combinations of plants and how they're interacting. And then we scale it up to understand whether this translates to larger scale, um, which they did this year at James Hutton Institute. They selected the combinations which appear to work best in the plot trials and then tested them in the field. And this was a pea barleys and a winter bean and pea, winter wheat and beans as well. And the difference is that instead of small plots, you have large strips and you follow an ecological sampling method to understand that heterogeneity in the field, which Adrian has already talked about, and how that influences the patterns which we then go on to see and how the crop performs. We measure the same kind of traits, but we get a better idea of the larger scale performance. And we're still waiting for the results from those trials. Another part of the project is to understand how it works on farm. And um, we have been engaging with farmers to run trials on their own farms across the different European countries. Um, and we in the UK had six farmers running trials, four in England and two in Scotland. And you can see that they're trialling some really innovative mixtures. It's quite interesting to see the mixtures which the farmers themselves wanted to trial are actually a bit more uh, novel and interesting compared to what they've been doing on the traditional research stations. And we're interested to see how these work in the field and also get some basic performance data from those. So in the UK, in England in particular, this group was set up in collaboration with Innovative Farmers, an opportunity to, for farmers to share their experiences of working with plant teams, how they work in the field with each other, visit each other's farms, see how it's going, but also collect some basic performance data in a kind of scientifically robust way to understand whether the, what the observations that are being made are likely to be replicable in the future and something that they would want to keep working with. So I'm just going to go through some of these trials from the past year as they find some interesting examples of what can maybe can't work with intercropping and how it could be applied in your fields. So the first farmer was uh, Mark Lee at Green Acres Farm and he did a intercropping trial on Carlin peas and triticale. Carlin peas are a traditional pea crop which he grows for hodmodods for human consumption and as they're a more traditional crop they tend to lodge, they're taller and they tend to lodge quite easily. So he was interested in growing with triticale for support to prevent this and he tested different um, drilling rates of triticale to see which provided the best support. So it's a really practical size. He drilled it um, with two passes 
and a one hectare strip and then he could just compare and see for the future which would be the best for him to carry on going forward with if it worked at all. The problem is that when the peas fall on the ground this obviously affects quality so his main parameter that he was going to go on and measure was the pea quality in the end and also um, potential for weed suppression as well as that sort of structural support. So he took some samples from his harvest and separated them to get an idea of the potential impact of the companion crop to the peas on yield. And he found that he had the best yield in his 10% triticale seed rate. But it obviously was quite an exceptional year and this isn't really representative of what every summer will hopefully be like. So he feels that um, from when he harvested and was working with the crop that he would actually go ahead with the 30% recommended drilling rate as he feels that there would still be a risk of lodging at the lower rates. It highlights that one year maybe doesn't always provide enough data and we're hoping to replicate this experiment on another time. Another trial was on uh, winter wheat and beans at Round Hill Farm in Wiltshire. They have a, they're an organic farm and they have an issue with wild oats. So the main aim of the trial was to see if the winter, which um, was lying around, <laughs> to quote um, James the farmer, uh, could help with suppressing those wild oats. He just thought, I've got this, this seed left over, I'm gonna drill it in there and see what happens. And he once again did large scale plots to test whether that weed control really came through, but also use up the leftover wheat and test whether it was gonna potentially provide competition with the beans, which were his main crop. So he split the field in two and did this. And the wheat uh, did really well, and it actually added a lot of value to his overall crop. While there was a slight reduction in the bean yield, if you combine the two crops and look at the cropping from the whole field area, you see that you're going to get a lot more. You might as well have this wheat instead of wild oats. We did some uh, observations on the wild oat progression in the field and found that those growing with the companion cropping of the wheat were much smaller and we really felt that there was weed suppression. From quadrat cuts, you can see that there is a real reduction in the weed biomass. This is a transect through the plot with the wheat versus without the wheat. And yeah, they're the preliminary results from these trials. We'll be sharing the results from both the um, research station, large scale trials, and the other on farm trials via the Diversify Project website, which is Plant Team. So um, just to signpost you to these results, which are going to be coming out from the past field um, season, to look at those different plant team combinations and how they work and keep kind of testing at a larger scale to see whether they can work practically in the field. And I'll pass over to Andy now. He was another farmer working in the network to trial.